some further adjustments. And a big part of those adjustments were to use much more of the uh, debt, stabiliz the debt stabilization or what I think is referred to formally as the capital stabilization form, uh, uh, capital sta yes, stabilization budget to uh, uh, provide additional revenue. At, at significant risk because as we go into fiscal 2013, the amount of uh, <coughs> debt stabilization left is well below what we've been doing on average before we've added additional money into uh, the budget, which means that uh, our fixed cost portion of the budget next year, 2013 I'm talking about, will, uh, will take a bigger hit because have more debt service to uh, uh, to fund. Uh, you saw uh, the town administrator put up the uh, exempt debt uh, uh, that's forecasted out. And it, in reality, we're going to even have to be careful about doing any bonding, you know, to increase that debt until it falls off. It's, which means that until October 2014, we're only going to be able to bond absolute emergency type uh, situations, things that have to be taken care of. We have to you know, stretch it out that far. So with that, uh, further comment from the audience? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, just, just a follow-up question on that. Um, I, don't, I don't disagree with it at all about uh, the difficulty in, in making some of these cuts, whether they're uh, general government or actually it's contract. But you made a comment um, that you know, reached a point on the town government side that there is nothing left to cut. Um, but if there appears that we still want to cut any school structures, it's just cutting them. So I, I guess I'd like to know what the thought process was from the board's perspective. Um, how do you determine, what is your, what's your measurement tool to determine that the schools can still be cut a little bit more, but the town government can't? And, and I'm not, I'm not <coughs> casting aspersions one way or the other, but how do you go about that? I think there's a couple of things you can look at. One is that if you go back a few years ago, the ratio between uh, school and town was 60% of the available revenue after fixed costs was going to the school, 40% was going to the town. Over this period of time, that number's crept up, crept up to 67% going to the school and 33% going to the town. The school budget, and it's you know almost 90% of salaries. The school contracts have been rather healthy, and as a result, uh, they're grown at a rate that's you know hard to keep up with at this point. And I know the school committee's worked hard to try to make some changes, but uh, just the structure of uh, the uh, some of their contracts is such that uh, you know they they need more money to fund uh, contract growth. And as a result, uh, you know, there's only a limited amount of money available to fund all of these programs. Um, on the town side, the, uh, I think the uh, town administrator mentioned that you know, <coughs> one of our goals is to, uh, we're working hard to uh, reduce sort of our, our long-term costs of contracts because that's what's driving our budgets. You know, we have Proposition two and a half. We raise two and a half percent in uh, new revenue each year because we're taxing to that levy limit. Our new growth is way down as a result of the economy, and then state aid, which you know we were we were getting an increase each year, it's, it's fallen off. And you know, even though uh, you know our legislation, the governor's made a big thing about funding Chapter seventy the match of last year, you know, it really, in order to keep pace with, you know, a school department uh, budget needs to be increased each year. And what did they do? They gave the school uh, chapter 70 a few additional dollars and took it out on the, the uh, balance of the money that comes into the, uh, uh, into, uh, into the town for uh, unrestricted uh, local aid. In addition to cutting the Quinn bill, to which you know we're obligated now to fund uh, the other ha twelve and a half percent of that, so as you can see, <coughs> we've reached the point where it's not that easy to uh, 
find additional money at least this fiscal year uh, this coming fiscal year for any additional uh, uh, funds for the school or even the town the town is faced with making some changes we have uh, we have not uh, mr. Belfast has said that we haven't filled positions we haven't filled two police officer positions for the past three years I believe uh, and uh, <coughs> we've reached the limit on this end Mr. Driscoll. Mr. Driscoll, I also want you to understand that the contracts that are in place in the school side, you're going to be going through the same problem again next year. And if they continue to use the same trends, and I understand you have to be competitive to bring the really good teachers in, but I think you're, they're at a point, what the school committee has done, what they've negotiated, is every year going forward, if they continue on that trend, you're going to have to let teachers go to be able to handle those salary increases. As you can see on the town government side, went from 40% and continues to go down. I mean, you, you can't keep that trend going, their salaries <coughs> going this way, and the percentage going that way. Something has to give. And that, I was at the meeting where there was only 11 other parents there at the, bud the budget workshop for them, and I, and I asked, this is the year for the teachers to really step forward and make a change, to understand that their contract is not realistic. It's not sustainable, it's, and it really isn't. And it's a, it's a really crappy position to be in because next year we're going to be talking about that same exact thing, over a million dollars. And if you look at the average of increases on the salary side for the schools and you compare it against anything else in the town, there's nothing out there like it. You know, and, I, and I know everyone in this room probably haven't seen four or five, six percent increases in your own personal life. And so the re we've got to get back to reality. And I was hoping that somebody was going to come from the schools and said, yes, they, they took our recommendation. Mr. Delaney made a recommendation. I made a re recommendation. We got to get it fixed for this year and next year because the cuts are unacceptable. They're too deep, and the kids have already been dealing with enough. Mr. Delaney? The way I see it, we don't solve this problem unless the employees on the school side, in terms of their contracts and their step increases, <coughs> step forward. And we don't get out of this problem unless the employees on the general government side step forward in terms of what they need to give back or reduce in terms of sick leave buyback on an annual basis and on an end of career basis. Um, they're complete budget busters. Health insurance is a complete budget buster. I think in this community we do a terrific job <coughs> providing services on the general government side, an exceptional job from public safety to DPW, town hall. Um, on the school side, we're providing and have provided an exceptional core level of education. And each dollar that goes back over there goes back into teacher contracts. We're not adding, adding programs. We're cutting teachers. We're cutting programs. Um, the way I see it, I'd like to hear from more of the community as to where you want your tax dollars to spend. People that stood up this evening, I think it's clear. You want to see it spent in education. But <coughs> in terms of making cuts, it's the employees that need to come forward to maintain jobs, preserve services, and hopefully add services or add programs on the school side. About three weeks ago, I sat in the school budget hearing and listened to the cuts that were somewhat discussed tonight. Oops. Textbooks are not going to be purchased in a science uh, class. $63,000 number. So that means students are going to be taught on outdated textbooks in science, putting them behind. School expenses are being cut by 15% to the tune of $98,000. Well, who's going to make up that $98,000? It's all the parents in the community that already give in terms of paper towels, tissues, and so forth. So that's how that money is going to be made up. The district wide professional development program. $30,000 is going to be cut. So the teachers that we entrust to teach the students in the community will not be given additional professional development. It's not acceptable. The sole instructional technology teacher with $45,000 is on the chopping block. One technology instructor townwide will be eliminated under these proposed cuts. Not acceptable. A high school teacher who's retiring in the creative arts program is slated to be not replaced. 
unacceptable. We went through this three, four years ago. The programs are cut and <coughs> teachers are not replaced. The programs don't come back. And if they do come back, there's a number of years of students who don't have the opportunity to engage in those particular courses and to address some interest that they may have. Unacceptable. There's a custodian on the chopping block. Well, the three years I've sat here, I've tried hard to make sure no employee gets laid off. And especially in this economy where I don't see someone finding a job today or tomorrow if they're laid off today. It's not going to happen. I like to avoid that at all costs. The foreign language teacher, and Mr. Driscoll addressed this, my understanding in seventh grade, foreign language is exposed to the students in the seventh grade for a 10-week period. We're already behind the curve. Foreign language, at a minimum, should be offered in the sixth grade. In my opinion, <coughs> people may disagree. I think it should be offered in the sixth grade. We give them a taste of it, an appetizer in the seventh grade. That position gets eliminated. Students are not going to be exposed to a foreign language in this town into the eighth grade. Where are we going? Backwards, I say. And with the elimination of that foreign language teacher, students who have now, I believe, one study hall a day, in that quarter in which they would be taking a sampling of foreign language, would have an additional study hall per day. Once again, heading back in a direction, going the wrong way, where we were about three years ago when we had half-day Wednesdays. Two study halls a day is a half-day, in my opinion, in the wrong direction. But looking at our revenues, our solutions are this. All the employees need to step forward, need to sit at the <coughs> table in terms of health insurance, the biggest budget buster. Teachers need to be realistic in terms of yearly inc step increases. To me, they're pay raises. I don't know if they're considered pay raises to the teachers. They're just unsustainable. In terms of townside employees, you really need to be realistic in terms of end of career buybacks, in terms of sick leave and annual buybacks. What's in those contracts are obscene. No one receives those. I know you don't want to be compared to private sector, but in the private sector, people are losing homes. People are being laid off. Employers are making changes on an annual basis in health insurance in order to maintain jobs. Private sector, people don't have a choice in terms of changes that are being made in health insurance. But those changes need to be made in order to preserve jobs. This isn't anti-town employees. This is a collective way for us to maintain jobs and to preserve and add to services and programs. That's the way I see out of this problem that we are having. I just like to make a comment that the uh, on the health insurance, the, uh, the budget that we're operating on, uh, the affordable amount, this is the town administrator said, is zero percent increase in the, pr in the premium and the hundred thousand dollars that we've added over last year uh, or this year's budget is strictly to accommodate additional enrollees, which we have experienced as a result of the downturn in, in the uh, economy. <coughs> a spouse who gets laid off, uh, may have, uh, his company may have been paying for the health insurance and now the uh, town or school employee picks it up and uh, we're obligated to fund that. So, other questions, anybody from the audience? Jeff, Jeff I'm sorry. Yes. Um, it's very interesting, uh, the board, uh, most of us, if not all of us, are pretty much on the same page, give or take uh, a little bit. Uh, we understand that uh, uh, education uh, that our children get every year, the one year that they get that, whatever grade they're in, once they go to the next grade, they don't get that education again. So whatever happens, whatever cuts we make, they lose. They are never regained. It's not possible. And the learning years, the, the one through eight, are the, the most crucial. 
uh, by the time they get to high school, 